Graphene is a single atom thick, so not very thick at all. So of course, it's very difficult to see in principle. So in 2004, 2003, 2005, people had this issue. How do I know that I'm making graphene? How do I know that uh, the material that I'm making is actually single atom thick? And that's a very important question, because if you don't know what you're making, forget about any application, forget about any device. And that's where, that's where spectroscopy comes in. Graphene really likes interacting with light, and that has really created the conditions for its widespread application and diffusion in all the labs. Indeed, in 2004, people were surprised to recognize graphene simply using an optical microscope. You could look down and you will see a contrast on the substrate and that will tell you that you have a graphene flake. But how was that possible? And what was realized in 2006 by different groups in Lancaster, Manchester, in Cambridge, in Italy and so on, almost at the same time within uh, a few weeks one of the other, is that when uh, a graphene is placed on a silicon substrate with a certain thickness of silicon oxide, uh, there are some constructive interference that light does at the interface between graphene and the silicon that makes this single atomic layer become completely visible, very easy vis visible by your eyes. And that's amazing, but the explanation is, uh, is actually very simple. And uh, however, uh, seeing the material with your own eyes is not enough. You can say, okay, I have a piece of graphene, but how good is it? Is it strained or not? Is it doped or not? Is it full of defects or not? So we have a lot of information needed in order to uh, uh, go towards application. And again, in 2004 and 5, in order to investigate graphene, we're doing what they're called all bars. So essentially, we're taking graphene, we're shaping it in a uh, rectangular structure with some contacts, and was, well, we're putting this at a very low temperature in a cryostat, and then they were applying magnetic field, and after they did all of this, they could see this massless Dirac fermion, so they could be sure of the quality of the sample they were making. There is only one flaw here, or maybe two flaws. One is that after you do all of this, what do you do with the graphene? You throw it away, because it's, it's been shaped, it's put in a bar, it's put, a, it's put in a cryostat, so it's not freely available for you. And second, most labs, and certainly almost no company, as the ability of doing this in order to recognize the sample. So this was the problem we faced uh, in 2003, 2004, and we realized that uh, by doing inelastic light scattering, so by having light interact with graphene, uh, with the atoms of graphene, and uh, exchanging energy with the atomic structure, and looking at the amount of energy that was lost, you could actually tell a lot about the samples. You can tell the number of layers, the doping, the functionalization, the strain, the presence of defects, and many, many other properties. And this is the basis of what is called uh, Raman spectroscopy. And Raman spectroscopy was what we developed in our first paper in graphene in 2004. We were looking at the behavior of the vibration of the graph uh, graphene lattice uh, at certain high symmetry points of the structure uh, of graphene. And by using light, uh, you can couple very easily to certain vibrations, and those can, can be seen selectively very easily in your spectrometer. And this is the fundamental technique that is now used in every single lab, every single company, everywhere worldwide, in order to identify the sample. Why is that? Because unlike the old bar, and unlike other approaches, you don't have to touch it with your own hands. You just shine a laser and it comes back. And after you've done the measurement, the sample is still pristine and is not damaged and is available to you to do whatever you want with it. This is called non-destructive spectroscopy or characterization tool because it does not destroy, does not modify the sample, but gives you all the information that you want. Most uh, Characterization technique has some advantages and some disadvantages, but I must say that when it comes to uh, spectroscopic investigation of graphene, the advantages are far superior to any disadvantage that you could have. The only disadvantage that you may have is the speed. 
It may be taking minutes or hours, depends on the size of the sample, uh, in order to do the full characterization. But uh, in reality, uh, the fact that you preserve the sample in the pristine state and then you can use it for something else really overwhelms any other consideration. I also have to say that people have now, are now developing other spectroscopic approaches in order to be quicker in doing the characterization of graphene. For example, one approach is to shine terahertz radiation on the sample, similar to the radiation that you use at the airport to do security scans. And in this way, you can actually distinguish regions with more or less defects, and especially grains of different size and different orientation within the sample. The drawback is that these terahertz long wavelength measurements have a very poor spatial resolution of the order of millimeters or several hundred micrometers or tens of micrometers. Uh, with traditional Raman spectroscopy, you can go down to a few hundred nanometers. Actually, this technique has been perfected and there are ways of taking uh, spectroscopic information down to the few nanometers level, so much shorter than the wavelength, the length of the wavelength of light that you're using for the investigation. This can be done by coupling light with the plasmon, so with the electron-electron C that stands at the top of a metal uh, tip, and this massively enhances the electric field locally and allows you to get a very precise and very local information on your sample. It is actually uh, the spectroscopic investigation of graphene is not fully solved. There are many questions that remain open, and especially when it comes to more than a single layer. So when you have two layers, three layers, four layers, 100 layers, and these layers are, for example, at a different angle with respect to one another. So how do I distinguish the angle between each of these samples? Or more interestingly, what happens when I go to the thousands of layered materials that do exist? For most of them, we don't have the uh, theory or the experiments when it comes to spectroscopy. And so all the work needs to be done. So in terms of spectroscopic investigation of layered materials, there is tens of years ahead of us of uh, uh, very interesting uh, and exciting physics to be done uh, in order to extract the information. But the beauty is that once you understand the basic physics, you can turn quickly this technique in an industrial or mass production technique. You must know that several companies use spectroscopy in the production line in order to check the quality of their samples. Unlike what uh, some people think, we do have already mass production of graphene in 2016. Here in Cambridge, there is a company called Einstein that produces equipment that can make graphene on a 300 millimeter wafer scale, hundreds of wafers at the same time, or even continuously. You can put a substrate on one end and then it continuously produces a large film. We have another company that can make tons of graphene in the powder form, it's called Cambridge Nanosystems. We have another company that can make uh, a lot of uh, graphene inks and liquids. And in the United Kingdom, we have many, many companies. So there are companies all over the world, in Europe, in Asia, in China, and US, producing graphene by the meter, the liter, the ton, the kilogram, and whatever. And now it is extremely important to standardize the production and the quality. And here, spectroscopy plays a key role. All the companies will need to apply the same spectroscopic approach in order to create a common standard so that the customer and the final user knows exactly what they are getting. So actually, it's the best time for spectroscopic investigations of graphene because everybody needs them. Pretty much as it is already in other uh, research fields, you need to standardize the production, you need to assess in the, uh, in the production line what you're doing, and spectroscopy is certainly one of the approaches that I'm sure every company will use and is using already.